So we're going to continue with our discussion of trees. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit first about why we're studying trees. So we've studied a couple of other data structures so far. The two I want to talk about today are sets and maps. And we said that both of these, this, I'm going to just use a singular today. Uh, and we said in Java, at least, what are these things? Are these classes in Java? They're interfaces. And we said that in Java, set is an interface, and there are two main branches here that have specific concrete classes associated with them. Ms. Mila, what are they? Hash set and tree set. Okay, we have hash set, and we have tree set. And a similar thing sort of exists here on the map side. What are the two here? Anybody know? Yes, sir. Hash map and tree map. Hash map and tree map. And you can see that the underlying structures here use hashing or trees. They use hashing or trees to implement the set. Now, in another couple of months, we're going to learn how hashing works, and that, that will give you a much better idea of the internal workings of a hash set and a hash map. But right now, we're learning about trees, and learning about trees will give you a much better understanding of how a tree set is constructed, as well as how a tree map is constructed. So that's our kind of goal for understanding how trees work. Trees, by the way, have lots of different uses in computer science. Uh, retrieving, storing and retrieving information quickly is one of their main uses. We're going to look at another interesting use where we will use trees to build expressions and evaluate expressions in mathematics. It's a very cool application of trees. There are, there are countless applications of trees. Okay, so we're going to go now and talk a little bit about a particular type of tree. And I mentioned to you that when we have a tree that has at most two children, each node has at most two children, that's a special kind of tree. And what did we say we call a tree that where the other nodes have more than two children? Yes, Mr. F. Sorry. So we're going to talk about binary trees. And our discussion of trees for this particular course will pretty much be limited to binary trees. You can have a generic tree. I think the first example that I gave you earlier was we had a, a, a hierarchy that represented the administration at West Hill, for example, and we had Mr. Rinaldi at the top and all the department heads were underneath him, and that was more of a generic tree, not binary. But here we have a binary tree. Now, <clears throat> the binary tree is going to be useful for us for many things, but what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to give you some simple definitions to remember for binary tree. And even though I don't normally ask you to take notes, I'm going to ask you to take notes here for a couple of reasons. First, we're going to have a quiz on this material next time we're together. And second, there's just so many definitions here, you're just not going to remember them all. Okay. Uh, the first definition we want to go over is something called a strict binary tree. This also has the synonyms of proper binary tree or full binary tree. This term is extremely misleading. These are better terms to use, but these three things mean the same thing. And basically what these trees are, these all three mean the same kind of tree, basically means that every node has exactly zero or two children. Is this a strict binary tree, yes or no? No. No. You can see that some of the nodes have one child. For example, this node has one child, this node also has one child, and this node has one child. If I were to delete these, is that a strict binary tree? Yes. It is. You can see that every node has exactly zero or two children. How about this one? Yes. 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 You can see every node has two children or zero children. As a reminder, the ones that don't have any children at all, like this one, this one, this one, and this one, what do we call those nodes that don't have any children? Yes, sir. Those are leaf nodes. And what do we call the other nodes? Anybody remember? Child. Those are internal nodes, okay? Child means that this would be the child of this parent here. That's a different definition. Okay, so that is an important definition that we will come back to later. That's, that's one thing, okay? The next type of tree I want to talk about is called a perfect tree. And what a perfect tree basically means is that all the nodes are filled up up, up into a certain level. So therefore, this would be a perfect tree. You can see that here, this, this is level zero, level one, level two, and this is level three. You can see up here I've got four levels and they're all completely filled up. Okay, the only ones that don't have children are the 
lowermost level. Yes, sir. So it's just that every level has the same number of children? No, so that's not true. Level zero only has two children. Level one has four children level. So that, that actually brings me to my next question. If, I have, if I'm at level I, how many children will there be? How many nodes will there be at level I? See if you can work this out as a, as a math problem with the person sitting next to you. Okay, uh, Ms. Teleska, what do you think? If I'm at level I, how many nodes are there? Okay, so number of nodes is equal to 2 to the i. Now let's look at a particular situation where I take a group of these nodes right here. There are three levels in this tree, levels 0, 1, and 2. What is the height of that tree? I mentioned to you there are two different definitions for height. What is the more common definition tell us is the height of this part that I have just in the box, just in the box? What is the height of that tree? Yes, sir? Height is 3. <clears throat> So uh, I think we had said that the two definitions are that this tree here would have a height of either uh, one or zero, right? And we said that the more common definition was that this would have a height of zero, so then that would be a height of what, sir? Two. two. And we said that there was another definition where this would be a height of zero, sorry, a height of one, and then if we use that definition, you were right, this would be a height of three in the box. What did we say about the empty tree? If there's like right here, there's no, no nodes at all. What would we say were the two possible definitions for the height of that tree? Yes, sir. Negative one and zero. Negative one and zero. What do we say was the more common definition? Negative one. Negative one. Okay. If it's going to be the other definition, I will tell you on the particular problem. So now here's my question. Assuming the common definition, meaning to say that the height of this tree is two now, three levels, height two. In fact, to make it easier, I'm just going to erase all these other nodes so that it's less confusing. I want to know how many nodes are there in this tree. I want to know how many nodes are there in this tree. You can see this tree has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for a perfect binary tree of height two, there are seven nodes. And so what I want to know is what is the general formula given the height h? What is the total number of nodes? So here's another way to think about it. It's going to be 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 square plus dot, 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 2 to the... So basically, I want the sum of 2 to the i for i is equal to 0 to h. And so see if you can remember how to do this from your mathematical days. If you can't, you could probably come up with a formula nice and quick here. Work with your partner and try and figure out what is the formula now for calculating how many nodes there are in a tree of height two, height three, height four, height h. Can someone tell me the formula for calculating how many nodes there are? If I give you h is the height of the perfect binary tree, how many nodes are there in a, in a tree of height h? Anyone? So if you're not sure, let's make a little table. Let's make a little table. So here's, here is uh, H, that's the height of the tree, right? And here is the number of nodes in a tree of that height, okay? And we already said that if the height is two, we said we have seven nodes. If the height is one, it's gonna be three nodes. And if the height is zero, it's going to be one node. I want to know here, what is this f of h as a function of h? How does that work here? Okay, let me put a few more in here. Maybe that'll help you. Who wants to tell me what's it going to be for a three? What's it going to be? Anybody want to take a guess what the next number is going to be? 31. So now you should be able to figure out what the function of h is. These numbers should look familiar to you. Okay, yes, sir. Mr. Schulzen? Is it 2 <clears> to <throat> the h minus 1 minus 1? It's uh, 2 to the h plus 1 minus 1. So f of h is equal to 2 to the h plus 1 minus 1. So here it's going to be 2 to the 0 plus 1 is 2 minus 1. That's 1. Here it's going to be 2 square. 4 minus 1 is 3. Here it's going to be 2 square is 4 minus, sorry, 2 to the third is 8, minus 1 is 7. You see that, right? So here, 
it means the total number of nodes here is equal to two to the H plus one minus one. And that's gonna be an important formula for us. Why are we learning all these formulas and definitions? It's because the, the operations on the tree, the big O factors for things like insertion and deletion, they're all gonna be dependent on these formulas. And so it's important we understand the definitions and the formulas because that'll allow us to describe how efficient the tree is when we do things to it, like add a new element or delete an element, things like that. I'm gonna say N is the number of nodes, N is the number of nodes, and I just said it was two to the H plus one minus one. So if I, if I know the height, I can calculate how many nodes there are. Now I would like to go the other way. If I tell you how many nodes there are, how can I calculate the height? So what I'd like you to do is take out a piece of paper and solve for H as a function of N. Okay, so what's the new left side now? N plus one equals? Okay, so now comes the hard part. How do I get rid of the two? Okay, very good. So I take log base two of both sides now. So I'm gonna go log base two of N plus one is equal to log base two of two to the n plus one. Now this left side can, the right side can be simplified, sir. What's, what's gonna be the right side now? This will just be n plus one here. Oh, sorry, h plus one, excuse me, h plus one. And over here is gonna be log base two of n plus one. And what's the last step, sir? Okay, so now I go log base two of n plus one minus one is equal to H. So this is the other formula where if I tell you how many nodes there are in the perfect binary tree, you can use it to calculate the height of the tree. This is gonna be more useful to us than the other formula, okay? There's also a shortcut for this formula, which I will show you, but we will not get into in the interests of time. This function here can also be written as the floor of log base two of n. Floor means you just bring it down to the next whole number. Okay, so these two basically are the same for our purposes. So now I'm going to tell you about one more type of tree and then we'll do a little coding to kind of get our feet wet on how to code for the binary trees. We're gonna talk about one more kind of tree. This kind of tree is called a complete binary tree. And this one is a little bit harder to describe, but basically what it means is it's either perfect or if it's not perfect, the only one that's missing any nodes is the last level. And if the last level is missing any nodes, they're missing to the far right. Everything to the far left is as filled up as it possibly can be. So let me give you some examples. Is that a perfect binary tree? It is, it's also a complete binary tree. Now this tree here is not perfect. You can see that there are nodes missing from this level, but it is complete because everything above the highest level is filled up entirely. The only ones that are missing are on this lowest, uh, highest level here. And they're all the, the nodes that are filled up are jammed to the left, you see that? So it's okay to be missing here. Question, is this a complete binary tree? Yes. What do you think? Mr. Basu, what do you think, sir? Yes. It is. How about this one? What do you think, Mr. Ramrani? No. You can see these nodes have not been jammed to the left as far as possible. So if I was gonna make this a complete binary tree, I would have to move one of these nodes over here, and now it will be back to being complete. Yes, sir. In like practical application, like I, I get the visual aid of the, um, the circles and lines, but what would the leftmost mean in a program? Like how do you confirm this? It turns out that a complete binary tree has a magical property that all the other trees do not have. It can be stored in an array. And we're gonna go over that. When a complete binary tree is stored in an array, that has a special name in computer science, that's called a heap. And we're gonna spend the better part of a, two weeks on heaps later in the course. You'll see how powerful these things are for sorting numbers and have lots of other applications. 
Uh, but for right now, we're just going to leave this as a definition, and I promise to come back to it and fill in your knowledge at a later time. Questions? Complete or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Complete or not? Mr. Mariak? Yeah. Okay. You getting the idea? All right. Well, the